Well, good morning. It's good to be here with you this morning. My name is Marie Smith, and I'm the pastor here at Community United Methodist Church. Whether you're in the building with us or if you're worshiping online, we're so glad that you're here to worship God with us. There's a few things. Today starts the, the Holy Week festivities. I don't know if we should call them festivities. Like, they are the week that we start to get to Easter. And so in your bulletin this morning, or if you are following along um, on Facebook or YouTube a little later, we um, invite you to follow through the communicator to see all the things that we are doing. And so in your bulletin, whether you got a piece of paper or in your bulletin itself, there's some Holy Week activities for you to follow along. And so we're, we are gonna do um, Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, and then we have something for um, that day of Saturday, and then we'll have Easter Sunday here. And so we hope that you will find time, sometime during Holy Week, to set aside one of those days, something during the week, to say, I want to start my Easter to get to Easter Sunday, um, that you'll set some time aside to say, I want to have something extra to prepare your hearts um, for Easter Sunday, where we celebrate what Jesus has done for each one of us. There's a couple things I want to also share with you about the life of the church. Uh, the other, oh, wait. The other thing is you got in your bulletin an extra postcard. You might say, well, I already got one of those. Well, you did. You absolutely did. But this one is for you to give to somebody else. Remember that on, on some of these high holy days, it's a perfect opportunity for us to invite somebody to come to church. Remember that, that like 70% of people would come if we invited them. We just simply say, hey, would you come? And you can hand them this postcard that says, here are some of the opportunities for you to come. And so remember, we'll have a 9 o'clock service here with handbells and choir and all of those traditions that people remember because some people remember what it was like. And then we have a contemporary worship service at 1030 um, where we'll have more of a contemporary feel um, to our worship. And so we invite, you can invite people to either one of those two um, services. And so you simply have to ask them, here, here you go. Um, come and join us for either of those two um, series. Now, maybe you say, well, they're not going to be here for Easter. We'll invite them to one of these other opportunities. Remember, Good Friday will be here. Monday, Thursday, we're going to do with the Lutheran and Presbyterian Church over at the Presbyterian Church um, at 7 o'clock for the Monday, Thursday service. Well, friends, we invite you to continue in worship as we... Um, we're doing things a little bit different this morning. And so to invite um, for us to get into the, the season of what Holy Week is like and the, the pomp and circumstance, we invite you to, to um, listen and get your hearts stirred up the way that the city of Jerusalem was with this anthem.
Good morning. Good morning. Let us bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, we begin today by giving you thanks. Your love for us is forever and it never fails. We know that there are many ways in which we have failed. However, please know that we are here to praise you and all of your blessings that you have given to us. You continue to give us mercy and grace. We thank you for your word and you reveal yourself to us on a daily basis. For that, we are so thankful. As we open the Bible today, as we sing your praise through song and listen to Pastor Murray deliver the message, we ask that your Holy Spirit would be at work opening our ears to hear and our hearts to receive your word. Maybe, may we be transformed into your likeness today and always. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our first reading today actually comes from 1 Chronicles. It's printed as 2 Chronicles in the bulletin, and it's on page 423. Um, with that said, and it's um, 1 Chronicles 29, 10 through 13. David praised the Lord in the presence of the whole assembly, saying, Praise be to you, O Lord, God of our father Israel, from everlasting to everlasting. Yours, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the majesty and the splendor, for everything in heaven and earth is yours. Yours, O Lord, is the kingdom. You are exalted as head over all. Wealth and honor came from you. You are the ruler of all things. In your hands are strength and power to exalt and give strength to all. Now, our God, we give you thanks and praise your glorious name. This concludes our first scripture reading. So I'm going to invite the kids to come forward. Do you want to come up? All right. Do we have Greedy? Is he going to come? Oh, there we go. All right. I didn't hear him yell. I'm running. So, all right. So I need your help today. So what is today? Does anybody? Palm Sunday. Palm Sunday. And what is Palm Sunday about? He rode into Jerusalem on a donkey. That's right. And so why was that important? I stumped you. Oh, look at that, right? I know, it's super confusing, right? Right? Well, that's because one of the signs that was royalty or really important people came into a city, they rode on a really important like an animal, they rode like an of the day. That so, what would be an important, um, what would be an important thing of transportation today? Well, if you saw somebody riding in, what would be a really important transportation? A car. What kind of car? Let's ask Mr. Southward. Hey, Mr. Southward, what's your fanciest car that you know of? Where's Mr. Southward? Where did he go? What would be the f fanciest? Somebody out there, tell us a fancy car. A what? A Cadillac. A Maserati. A Corvette, right? Did anybody go in the Little Miss per uh, Pumpkin Parade? What did you ride on? I rode on a Mustang. A Mustang. I'm, I'm not, I didn't do Little Miss. I did um, Little Miss Firecracker. Okay, and what did you ride on in the parade? Mustang. A Mustang. Anybody else ride on anything fancy? Really, none of your children rode on anything fancy out there? A station wagon. <laughs> I tell ya. Any? Well, you know, anything else fancy out there? I rode on a float. On a what? On a float. On a float. All right, an FFA float. That's pretty fancy. Yeah, yeah. Those are really fancy things, right? Wouldn't you think? Yeah. So Jesus rode on, the, on one of the fanciest things, like a donkey, like that. And not only was this donkey fancy, but this donkey had never been ridden before. Imagine. It's like God had the power. Well, no, this, was just God, this wasn't like this was just a fancy donkey. Like this was one that nobody had ever touched before. This was like a really fancy donkey right? It's like the fanciest car out there. That was sort of what this story is telling us, right? And so the people, when they saw Jesus, 
Some of the people knew who he was, but not everybody knew who he was. Yeah. And so when they saw this really fancy donkey, this really new donkey, right? It was a new donkey. And they saw this person riding in the t town. They got very excited because if you see somebody fancy coming into town, what are you going to do? Are you going to stop and look at it? You're going to try to meet them. You're going to, you're going to wonder what's going on, right? That's, what, that's sort of what happens, right? How do they tell a donkey out of a donkey? Well, I don't know. You're going to have to ask somebody who knows a little bit more about that. That's like another story for another day, but we're going to, like, we're, we're going to have to ask somebody who's smarter about those things than me. Um, I don't know, because this is what the story tells us, is that the donkey was there. So, because that's... That's what the Old Testament tells us that had to be fulfilled. Like, that's what the story said we had to do. Anyway, that's a good question, though. We'll have to ask somebody who's smarter than us. They have longer, oh, they have longer ears. Ha, Aubrey told us. See, she's smarter than, than me. All right, so, so when they came into town, some people knew who he was and some people didn't. And so when they figured out that this must be somebody really important, we know the story, right? What did they do? They did. So we have some palm branches, right? So everybody gets a palm branch, right? Everybody gets a palm branch. Where did they get these palm branches from? So we don't, they get them from a palm tree. Thank you, Xander. That's right. Oh, you got a little one. Here, you get another one. Here you go. Here you go. So, so they took some, so they didn't get palm branches necessarily. They took branches from the trees, right? Because they wanted, they wanted to get his attention. They were like, hey, what do you do when you want to get somebody's attention in a parade? You scream at them. Yeah. Do you, like, wave your hands? No. no. They can't hear you. I wave at everybody in a parade. I'm like, hey. I yell at my. Do you think that that's what they did in the parade? Yes. I think that's what they did in the parade, too. That's what I think they did. Do you know what else they did? What they did during that time period when somebody, ro somebody of royalty, what's royalty mean? That's a big word. What's that mean? Like you're special. You're special? No, that's one thing. What else? What's royalty mean? You're like either like a king or a queen. A king or a queen. Oh, hey, we were, we were wondering. Here, you get another one. We're, we're, we were waiting for you. All right, so when royalty comes, that's like a king or a queen. Like that's in charge of the whole country. When they were coming in, they took off their, their coats and all of their, here, you can have another one. We have plenty. They took off their coats and they put them so that they could make a way. They could make the, the ground be nice and flat for the donkey to walk on. All right? Yeah. So we, I have some coats and some shirts for us to make a way. So can we do that down our aisle? Can we do that? Let's go practice it. Okay. Everybody's got a piece. Here we go. Here's one. I don't know. I found them. I found some. It's not your shirt. It's not your shirt. Here's another one. Okay, and then I want you to take some of our palm branches, and I want you to, um, you're going to hand these out to people in the, in the congregation. Here we go. Go hand these to a couple people out there. Hand some out. Hand some out. Here you go. Here's some. Put them in the, in the aisle, just like you think they might have done it for Jesus. Go hand them out. No, you got, you got to, is this is a little, this is, this is like, this is, put them out a little bit further. How do you think the donkey would have, we got to, we got to spread this out. There we go. Much better. Spread it out a little bit. There we go. There we go. Spread this out a little bit. Yeah. Oh, here, here's some more. Hand them out. Hand them out to people. Here. There, nope. You want to hold on to one because you're going to be, oh, good job. Good job. Good job. Good job. All right, and then come back when you're done, because we're about to sing this song and pretend that we were there. All right, everybody got handing them out? All right, oh, you've dropped one. All right, we got some on this side over here. Here's some more. Go hand them over on that side over there. You want to hand some over on that side over there? Hey, Xander, you want to get on this side over here? All right. All right. All right. So when we walk, we have to be careful that we don't trip. Okay. 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 I only have this one more. All right. We got it? All right. So let us all stand together as we sing. Hosanna, loud Hosanna. All right. And we're going we're gonna to process around the way that Jesus might have. 
Ah, yeah, I might need one. And then I'll give it back to you. Won't you turn and welcome one another to worship today? And this morning, our special music will be shared with us by the Victory Ringers Bell Choir. Today they will be playing for us in the garden.
That was wonderful. Thank you. Our second reading comes from Luke chapter 19, 28 through 40. Jesus comes to Jerusalem as king. After Jesus had said this, he went on ahead, going up to Jerusalem. As he approached Bathage and Bethany at the hill called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples saying to them, go to the village ahead of you, and as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there, which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you untying it? Say, the Lord needs it. Those who were uh, sent ahead went and found it, just as he had told them. As they were untying the colt, its owners asked them, Why are you untying the colt? They replied, The Lord needs it. They brought it to Jesus, threw their cloaks on the colt, and put Jesus on it. As he went along, people spread their cloaks on the road. When he came near the place where the road goes down the Mount of Olives, the whole crowd of disciples began joyfully to praise God in loud voices for all of the miracles they had seen. Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. I tell you, he replied, if they keep quiet, the stones will cry out. That concludes our second reading. So I don't think I have to do cardio today. (laughs) Well, let us pray. Holy and gracious God, we ask that you would open our hearts so that we might hear what you need us to hear this morning. Or do this through me or in spite of me, but in every case, hide me behind your cross. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So I will never forget the moment that the words of King David and Jesus they rolled all rolled into one they came to me it was like I couldn't help but sing it praise God from whom all blessings flow praise him all creatures here below praise him above ye heavenly host praise father son and holy ghost amen amen Amen, 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 and amen. It's the Avery Avery Marsh doxology. And I had just been recommended for my ordination. I had just walked out of the room where 60 people had just said yes. It had felt like I was in front of a firing squad, and I had almost failed. I was scared, I was worried, and as I walked out of the room, I sang that song. It was the only one that came to me, and I don't sing very well, as you can hear. I don't belong in those seats over there, but I just had to praise God at the end. It's what a doxology does, right? It's the ending of a prayer, and this week, We end the Lord's Prayer, a doxology. It's the ending. It's the way that we we wrap up. It's the praise at the end. That's what a doxology is. This morning, we, we find the end of the Lord's Prayer actually found the first written manual of our Lord's Prayer in a manual, a set of church doctrines, a manual actually for the, the church living in a time when we, the church had just started out. It was in that very first, around, written around um, 60 CE. We had just started this new religion separate from Judaism, and it was this new manual was written before the Gospel of John had been completed. It was about the same time that the Gospel of Mark had been completed. 
And so we find this completed version of the Lord's Prayer in something called the Didache. And so unless you're a church history geek like me, you might not have ever heard of this, but it's the Didache actually is translated the teaching of the 12 apostles. And so they took this kind of manual and wrote what they were doing and how to function as a church in its earliest formation. It had the same flavor, it had some of the same flavor of their Jewish history or their heritage, but it had some very distinct differences, things like baptism and Holy Communion. And it's here that we find this complete version of the Lord's Prayer, very similar to the way we say it today. And so today, let's say the Didache, chapter 8, verse 2 where we find this. And so let's say it together. For thine is the power, the glory forever. So this manual references, actually, Jesus' words that he finds in what Kara just read. It's found in 1 Chronicles 29. And so just for some background, King David is at the end of his reign, and he announces that God has anointed his son, Solomon, to take over. And he stands once again before the people, and he names all that God has done. He himself sings a doxology for the people. And he says, this is what God has done. Have you not seen? Have you not heard? This is all that God has done. And he says this final praise as he wraps up all about what God has done the God who has shaped him and formed him from his youth. And he says in this last verse, I love this, in chapter 29, verse 11, Yours, O God, are the, the greatness, the power, the glory, the victory, and the majesty. We hear it, right, from that. For yours is the power, the glory. For all that is in the heavens and on earth is yours. Yours is the kingdom, O Lord, and you are exalted as head above all. We can see the commonalities. We can see where Jesus pulled for this Lord's Prayer. Power, glory, and forever. What I find interesting about the, this doxology form of writing is the interchange that you can find between the beginning and the ends of a doxology, right? In this form of prayer. If we think back to the very beginning of Lent, we started with our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Hallowed, holy, set apart, and sacred. David does this, doesn't he, at the very end when he is wrapping up all that God has done for him. When he says, blessed are you, O Lord, the God of our ancestor Israel forever and ever. He's starting and ending with the same kind of praise and worship. It's what we to do. It's what Jesus is teaching his disciples. It's what's summed up in the Didache. It's what the 12 disciples wanted the people to understand. It's what we too understand, even now, 2,000 years later, understand. And so let's walk through this final line of the Lord's Prayer. And so let's start with thine. This little short Jesus prayer has only eight short phrases, 13 verses, and 64 words. But it starts with this last line of thine. Thy, in plain English, is your. Your power, your glory, your kingdom. So often when we think about prayer, we get caught up with what we need, things we want. I get caught up in mine. God, help me with me, what I need. My stuff, my family, my neighborhood, my house, my ideas, and my needs. But that's not what God is after. We sometimes prioritize ourselves over God and how God is shaping us. See, King David finally got it. He got it that it was not about him it was about something bigger than him. When we prioritize ourselves, when we say mine, not thine, things get messy, right? It's what we've been talking about all this season of Lent. When we collectively don't forgive, when we rely on 
when we don't rely on God for our needs, when we follow pathways that lead us into destruction, we hurt others and ourselves. And so Jesus, in this prayer, offers us an example of how to move through the messiness of life. He says, this is the way to do this. And so on this Palm and Passion Sunday, we need it. We hear the hosannas, right? The choir did a beautiful job setting us up to hear the beautifulness of the hosannas of that day. But let's face it, Holy Week is messy. It was messy then and it's messy today. As Jesus rode through the streets of Jerusalem, he heard the excitement of the crowd, the roar of them thinking, who could this be? Who could be riding into Jerusalem today? Now, some of them knew who he was, but some didn't. They had come from out of town. They had come for Passover. They'd come to bring their, their almsgiving and to give their sacrifices. Now, remember, it was common for royalty to be greeted with a parade. It was a sign of respect to pave the road with branches and clothing. And so as Jesus came, some knew of his reputation. But Jesus would not be swayed. He didn't let all that excitement go to his head. The Lord's prayer echoed in his mind, lead me not into temptation. Don't let me get swept up in this, O oh God. He was not tempted by the power of the crowd. He was not tempted by their praise and shouts of adoration. He remained focused on his task ahead. And so when he entered and the whole city was in turmoil asking, who is this? He wasn't swayed. We all get swayed and, and caught up in a crowd, though, can't we? I can caught, get caught up in a, in a crowd in a moment. We all get swept up in the next biggest thing. We get caught up in emotion. We just do. Just go and ask anybody who is caught up in anything. All I have to do is, is ask you about things like abortion rights. Some of you are going, oh, my, she's not going to talk about that talk about gay rights in Tennessee or trans rights or drag shows or, or I don't know, anything that's a hot, topic, a hot button topic. Oh, go talk to teachers about book bannings. Some of you are just thinking, how do we get out of here right now? <laughs> Emotions run high. Wait, just go to Michigan and scream out, O-H! Or come to an Ohio State game and shout, go blue! It just happens, right? We get caught up in emotions. And sometimes we get so caught up that we forget about the people involved. And we do things that we would never do as individuals, right? It's what happened in that crowd, When Jesus was betrayed by his own disciples, he was handed over to Pilate, the regional leader. I can't imagine that they thought. They got caught up in the crowd. Pilate was known for his cruelty. And he asked the crowd, who do you want? The same crowd that was there pulling branches off the trees and taking off their coats to make a, a path for him. We wouldn't do that, would we? But we will quickly get on a bandwagon because somebody said something about something else. Good heavens, I will join a parade in a second. Like, who's coming? What's that about? I want to know what that's about. What's that? Right? Because we, we get caught up in the emotion of the moment. And the crowd, they saw these two people, this Jesus, and the crowd was riled up. And there was Barabbas, a rebel rouser. He had caused trouble for the Romans. He was, a, he was a political zealot. 
And they yelled, Give us Barabbas. Crucified Jesus. Talk about a turn of events. Where would we have been? Would we have been caught up in the crucify him? Would we have been in the crowd? It's hard to say. I'd like to think I would have known where I've been, but I don't know. Do we know? But Jesus, Jesus, even to the end, chooses goodness and peace. He chose in the last words of that that last line of the Lord's prayer, Lord, yours is the kingdom and yours is the power and yours is the glory. He fixed his eyes not only on earth, but also in heaven. Where are our eyes fixed this holy week? Are they on earth and heaven? It doesn't have to be one or the other. It can be both. How will we start this holy week, this bitter sweetness, right? We start out with the highs of alleluia, and we get to the hardness. of the cross will we get caught up in the emotions or will we choose goodness our symbol of Christianity is a cross it's a symbol of death it is a reminder not only of what Jesus did but that we too participate in that death that we, we too, might be in the crowd yelling, crucify him, crucify him. Because we can get caught up in it too. And so as you ponder this week, the messiness, the messiness of the week, I invite you to ask yourself, will you choose goodness? How do you get caught up in the crowd? And so here are your invitations for the Holy Week. First, join us. Set aside some time. Is it Monday, Thursday? Maybe Good Friday is not a good day for you. Maybe it's Easter Sunday. Maybe 9 o'clock is too early. Maybe you have plans for Easter Sunday. Go to Emmett Chapel. Theirs is at 8.30. They're having a sunrise service after the sun has come up at 8.30. Seems a little strange, doesn't it? But but we are now going to get caught up in the crowd of that. We are going to celebrate with them at 8.30, you know. There are a bunch of other churches to go to. If you want, if this is not the right time, if 9 and 10.30 don't work for you, help, let me help you find a time that works for you. Who are you going to invite? And then I invite you to get to ask yourself, where is it that you, if you stopped and took a step back and said, wait, what do I think about this? Where do I stand on this? What does Jesus say about this? Where is Jesus in the midst of this? Whatever that might be. And how do I, as a community of faith, step in the gap for those that Jesus invites? Because that's what it means to be the kingdom of God working in our community and beyond. To say, Jesus invites us here for Resurrection Sunday next week. Well, let us pray. Holy and gracious God, We give you thanks for today. We thank you for the the alleluias that we sing. The blessed be his name. The cries of the, the people who were so excited to see him that we too are so excited 
to welcome the palm branches and the children running through the, the aisles. And yet we also know that Good Friday is coming where you taught us to be humble. You reminded us of your sacrifice where you forgave those that betrayed you who turned their back on you who left you and were afraid and so Lord we ask that you too would meet us here in the joys of life and in the sorrow. We ask that you would be with those in our community who are suffering today, those that are ill, those that have lost loved ones, those that are dealing with difficult situations. We ask you, O God, that you would remind us in those moments when when we are caught up in the latest headline to pause and remember you. We ask you, O oh Lord, that, that you would help us to see each person who we interact with today and each day with eyes like yours. Give us grace for today and each day. We ask this in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray together this holy and sacred prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Won't you sing together verse one, what wondrous love is this? And so I'm going to invite the ushers to come and collect our tithes and our offering. It's a way that we honor God with our giving. Won't you give God your very best?
Holy and gracious God, we offer these, our tithes and offering to you. We ask, Lord, that you would use these to expand your kingdom here on earth, we pray. Amen. Won't you remain standing as we sing our final hymn this morning, O Sacred Head Now Wounded, page 286 in the hymnal, or it will also be on screen. So friends, I invite you to go out and live in the tension of Holy Week, this tension between the shouts of Alleluia to the tears of Good Friday to the shouts of Alleluia, He is risen of Sunday. Don't miss this tension of all that Jesus went through on our behalf. Go in the name of Jesus who has done so much for us. Go and share that good news with everyone. Go in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may have a seat for the postlude, or you may meet me in the, the Welcome Center. <laughs>